All right, it's called Black Sheep. Uh, I'm going to break it into three things because all good things come in three, as my grandmother used to say. Um, black Sheep is obviously a British term, an English term. I think it carries abroad. Who's a, who, an Aussie knows what a Black Sheep is. Yeah. I asked a German guy yesterday and he understood it as well. So the, the Black Sheep is what I've always been called in my family. Uh, I'm Welsh, uh, so that's a nice uh, erotic image. But, but my sister's the good one. My sister's very good. She's a great mother, um, married her childhood sweetheart. And she says half jokingly, I think, she says, Tom, you know, you're the, you're the black sheep. And she, she tries to get me to settle down and, you know, do the right thing. And that's fine, I don't blame her for it, but that's where the term comes from. So my, I've always been a bit of a black sheep, um, not doing what I should. Um, not going down the career path that I should based on what I studied, not um, doing the right thing in terms of my school teaching, not in a dodgy way, but uh, my teaching methodologies were always quite bizarre. I was always monitored by senior management. My results were always good, above average. So they couldn't throw me out, right? Because Ofsted inspectors, their school inspectors, they liked me because the results were very good. But the senior staff didn't like me because I didn't like meetings like this. You know what it's like, a corporate culture, you have to start the day with a meeting and uh, any excuse for a meeting, any excuse for training. And some people love it because training is a great chance to relax and eat free biscuits and go on all these courses, yeah? But it used to really make me mad. I was never that person. I just wanted to get on and do it. So when I started Day Game, I, I carried that through. I, um, I saw Day Game as this renegade, uh, naughty thing. All right, mate. And a day game, you are a black sheep, right? Drop, drop this idea that um, day game's going to go mainstream, because it's not. Cold approach will never go mainstream. It will never have positive media acceptance. So stop trying to change people's minds, right? You are doing something weird. The weird feeling never goes away, as all the good day gamers know. You always feel a bit weird, especially the first one or two of the day, yeah? You're not in where people want you to be in. You're not in the pen. Is that what they call it on the farm? You're not with the flock. You're not with the herd. <coughs> so how do most guys meet their partners and their wives? You already know it's from work. It's from friend or friend. It's from now online dating, plenty of fish, match.com. It's from Tinder, lots of Tinder marriages. Yeah, But the moment you tell people that I met this girl in Sainsbury's or outside Topshop or whatever, they, that's not allowed. Right? You're not playing by the rules. So as soon as I discovered day game, I thought, this is great. Yeah, it's like playing the casino at their own game, legally, and uh, working out this little hustle. Um, so those of us in here that do day game, we know that the hustle works. We also know that people think it's weird. People look at you when you do jump in front of girls. That never goes away. People will always stare at you. If you do it like me in weird places, cafes and bus stops, they really look at you. Right? And women are often looking at you with a smile because they're, you know, secret society, they, they like it. Men, they don't like it. Right? You know in a nightclub you're going to get cock blocked, but in the day there's a very subtle form of cock blocking, which is guys um, maybe interrupting the set, asking you for directions, giving you disapproving looks. I've had white night guys coming up to student sets and trying to save the girl, you know, warning her about this creepy pickup guy. So, um, yeah, it's just a message that you're not going to be accepted. So if you are a day gamer and you choose this way to meet women, then you're, a, then you're a pirate, you're a renegade, and you have to embrace it. There's that famous saying, you can't be half a gangster, right? You can't kind of half do day game and then try and justify it to people and make it all clean and PC. You just have to accept that what you're doing is weird. And it's, I'm telling you this because as soon as you accept it, uh, you can get on with it, right? And that spotlight goes away and the anxiety is understandable, okay? And you, you, um, you stop trying to preach and convert to others. So we're also not following the dating rules, yeah? Uh, if you're still reading men's magazines, I hope you're not, but if you're still buying men's health and all that stuff, the advice in those magazines is completely contradictory to what those of us who date a lot know to be true. So again, this, this freaks out people. Um, 
it, it annoys girls when you're not following the mould. Um, you'll get flack from your parents, you'll get flack from certainly married friends. You know, there's this moral kind of high horse often. They don't mean to do it, but they'll say, you know, oh, Tom, this is, this is weird. You should, you should do, the, do the right thing. You know, you should man up. As the older I get, the more of those kind of comments I get, yeah? Tom, you really need to do the right thing now. You've had your fun, but enough is enough. You know, you need to, you need to get back in the pen, right? Because we're all in the pen, and we want you in the pen. Because when you're not in the pen, you're not controllable. And that really upsets a lot of people. And you can understand why married men leave angry YouTube comments. Most of my angry YouTube comments are from married guys. But I'm not going to get married again, and I'm not going to have kids. This year I'm even, you know, probably going to not cut my dick off, but uh, <laughs> cut something else, just to, just to save me the constant worry about um, getting a girl pregnant. But um, I've decided I'm not going to get married. I'm not having kids. I'm not going to get a mortgage. I'm not building up some kind of retirement thing. Uh, I don't own property, and I'm, I'm not living in one city. Right, that really freaks people out, right? Not forget the boyfriend thing in the art gallery. When you tell somebody that, the man next to you on a, on a flight or a train or your mum finds out or the guy at work finds out that you are no way in the frame, they freak out. And you get big opposition. You get a, a tirade of questions about, you know, being irresponsible. What are you doing? You can't do this because we're all here, so you should be in here, yeah? Um, Tom, you should do what everybody else does, yeah? You should do what the masses do. Um, and you will, like I said, get called sexist. You will get called uh, misogynist. Uh, if only you could see my inbox every day. It's funny, the more, the more popular you get in terms of book sales or whatever, people watching on YouTube, your hate mail exponentially grows. And this year it's, it's, it's got to crazy proportions, yeah? I love the hate mail. But it's, it's always about this. It's always about this. When they see that you're not in the frame, then they come at you, right? Um, because I'm not being PC, because you know, you're, what, what do they call it online? You're triggering some girls, I don't know. You're not in the safe space. Um, people will come at you. So I've learned to embrace it, that's what I'm saying. Previously I, I hid pickup, I was ashamed of pickup. I was ashamed of feeling masculine, of going after pretty young girls, right? People will make you feel ashamed. But the, it's weird, the moment I accepted it and said, okay, Tom, you can't be half a gangster. This is it. Day game is not something I do now. Day game is, is what I am. This is my lifestyle. This is my chosen thing. It's become my career. Then um, all those niggles go away and you stop feeling sorry about being the black sheep and apologizing to people. And the thing goes away about feeling too old. So now I go after the last free pickup videos I've got for the product are three 19 year olds, right? And last year I'd have been, I'd have done it, but I wouldn't, wouldn't have gone after purposefully college girls in New York, London and Poland. But this year I don't feel bad and I'm not apologizing. And I've realized the girl absolutely loves it. Yeah. All right, so the moment you embrace this as well, you realize this is cool, okay? All right, so we've really got to learn about the dynamics of frame because it's, it's helpful with your day game, it's helpful with your texting, it's obviously helpful on dates. But for those of you in here that decide to do the, the girlfriend thing for a while, temporary, permanent, engaged, move in, married, babies, you really fucking need to learn frame, right? I don't really need to learn much frame because my relationships last uh, a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two. But you want to do 30 years with a girl? All right, get ready, yeah? Okay, so frame, number one, the message is that it's not uh, combat, it's not angry. So what men misunderstand on the internet when men's rights guys are debating with feminists, the left is debating with the right, someone's debating with somebody, frame for them is a war. All right? And guys go, okay, I need, to, I need to crush this girl. Yeah, she's such a bitch. And I say, she's not a bitch, she's just a bitch with you. And I go, whoa, shit. Because you're, you're encouraging this combative thing. Right? And the more you rage against feminists, the more they'll come back at you. Right? And the more you take shit tests personally, the more they'll grow, the more you'll lose. Okay? So people with masterful frame, can anybody think of somebody in the spotlight right now who has masterful frame? Any? Hugh Grant's frame. Hugh Grant's frame is pretty good. Donald Trump. Trump is what everybody's talking about at the moment. We don't need to talk about whether you like him or not, or you agree with him or not, but we, we can talk about his frame. 
Jason Brand? Brand lost the frame for a while, didn't he? And now he's, I think, well, he, got, he tried to be political and his frame was fucked up and now he's vanished for a while. But I predict with Brand he'll be back. Yeah, you can't keep an alpha male down, right? He's, he's going to be fucking good. But the Katy Perry thing crushed him when he got married. He, he lost the frame. Um, somebody like Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Who did The Apprentice in Britain? Alan Sugar. Alan Sugar. Right, so you can watch reruns. Just watch the bit in the boardroom. Don't watch the staged um, trials. But watch Alan Sugar dealing with shit tests from weak men and weird girls, yeah? Watch Trump in the boardroom. Watch press conferences. Watch people with good frame. So if you're a day gamer, you know how to pass a shit test. Who would like to contribute to how to pass a shit test? What are the two main PUA methods? Green, up green amplified and unaffected. Yep. Agree and amplify and unaffected. So you have to remember those two strategies for life, right? So if a girl comes at you or, uh, like I get, some journalists come at you and get an email like baiting me to reply, asking me to appear on Channel 4, right? They're really baiting it. And they, they're the wolf in sheep's clothing, which we'll talk about later. But um, <coughs> you think, okay, non-reactive. So that's usually my strategy number one. I don't reply to the email. Delete. Don't even reply, because as soon as you engage in debate, as you know, with children or sometimes angry girls, they're in, right? So then you've got to be ready for combat. So by simply ignoring it, which is a great club strategy, you know, she says, oh, you got such a gay shirt. You smile, you turn away, yeah? Can't always do it, though. You can't just keep ignoring shit tests on the street, especially not on a date, because she'll ask you what's wrong with you, yeah? So the second strategy, which PUAs love, we should know it, agree and amplify and that just means uh, smile make a joke out of it uh, parody it agree ridiculously okay so we're going to practice some of that in a minute um, and guys forget that it's not just the girl trying to take the frame <coughs> off us the girl the girl is saying come on jump through my hoop you can think of this as a hoop you know any shit test from anybody but today we're thinking about girls. So when she says, uh, you're too old for me, or do you, talk, do you do this all the time? She's basically saying, come on, jump through my hoop. So when a Channel 4 reporter says to me, you know, uh, do you believe in, uh, do, you, uh, do you feel threatened by powerful women? They often say that to me. Do you feel threatened, Tom, by powerful women? That's what they're doing, yeah? So, um... I often don't jump from it, jump through it, but don't forget, guys, forget that I can also make her jump through my hoop. So frame control with girls is called, anybody know? Uh, congruence test. It's a, it's a test of congruence, but you are qualifying, right? So when I say to you, um, how tall are you? There you go, I qualified you. So my little strategy is also, uh, the politician strategy. So when they ask me to jump through their hoop, I say, no, 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 you jump through my hoop. Right? So you deflect and, and qualify. So we're going to do a lot of qualifying with each other. And it's a very, very powerful strategy. Women love to jump through your hoop. Women, the famous saying says, don't really want to hold the frame. Right? She snatches it off you like a little kid, and she's waiting for you to snatch it back. And if you've got kids, or you're a, a teacher, you've been a teacher, you'll know that they secretly want you to have the frame. They're pushing your frame just to see if you're a man or a mouse, but they really want you to take it back. So there's a delight in getting girls to qualify. There's a delight in passing shit tests. Okay, let's start with the girl first. So I'm the girl and I'm holding the frame. I'm on the street. You've just run up to me. What are some of the classic things that a girl says um, to basically say, come on, justify yourself, jump through my hoop. What shit test do you get on the street? You always do this with girls on the street. Yeah, okay, so I'm saying to you, do you always do this? And what would the good response be? How can you take the frame off me? Uh, my, my usual response is, yeah, about six times a day. Yeah, so that's agree and amplify, yeah? yeah? Who uses that one? Do you always chat up girls? Or how many girls have you spoken to today? A lot of day gamers go uh, 364. Your number, 365. That's agree and amplify. Anybody know a different way to deal with that shit test? What do you use for that when she accuses you of being a player? 
Um, I just say like, life is short. If I see a girl, I'll go and say hello. Yep. Sort of yep. So that's uh, non-reactive. Yeah. Uh, that's the one I use. So the girl says to me, "Do you do this a lot? Do you always go up and talk to girls?" And I actually ask her to jump through my hoop. So I say, "Listen, life's very short. When you see something you want." You should go for it. Don't you agree? And girls always go, yes. And I say, yeah, good. I like that about you. That's good. OK, so you win the frame. Uh, what's another shit test you get on the street? Come on, big gamers. I've got a boyfriend. I've got a boyfriend, yeah. It's a, it's a pretty scary frame when you get that one. Freaks all my students out 100%. So the interaction's been really good. You say, listen, I'd love to take you out. I have a boyfriend. She's going, come on. doesn't matter. On. Come out with me anyway. Well, that's fucking alpha. That's good. <laughs> Be wary of smashing the frame completely, RSD style. <coughs> Keep your company when we're not together. Just Agree and amplify. He can pour the tea. Uh, he can take you to church. That's nice. Uh, he can keep us company. He can keep you company when I'm not there. I say I don't want to be your boyfriend. Uh, anybody got another one for I've got a boyfriend? I have a dog. I have a dog. Yeah. So that's almost non-reactive. You say that's nice. Um, that's nice. I have fish. Anyway, listen, another time, I love to da 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 And you'll be shocked. If you haven't tried it, you'll be shocked that you get 50% <coughs> of girls giving you the details. Obviously, they don't all come out with you. Depends on how committed they are and what stage of the relationship really is. Okay? If she's engaged, it's pretty hard. Sad statistic that I never really put on YouTube, I'll probably cut this bit out, is that more than 50% of the girls I've laid in five years have had a boyfriend. And if she says she's married, you stand almost double the chance of fucking her. <laughs> Don't tell that to your friend, right? You'll make him cry. <laughs> this is stuff that society doesn't want to know. Again, so if you say this in public, you're going to get a lot of flack. I can say it because I don't have a job, but if you say it, you'll lose your job. Right? I'll see you on Sky News tomorrow, and you'll, you'll, have, you'll have lost your job. Because the moment you air that in your office, you'll be fired. Sexist pig, right? I'm just saying, don't shoot the messenger. These are statistics from five years of talking to girls. I'm telling you the truth, all right? Um, uh, okay, I'll give you some shit tests. You might get these on the date, okay? She says, she says to you, why are you single? Why aren't you married? Tom, you're 36 and you're not married. What the hell is wrong with you? Why aren't you married? What would you say? Oh, girls are trouble. Yeah, Good. Agree and amplify. Ball and chain. What would I want one of those for? Whereas you can just laugh it off, make a joke, proper alpha male. Didn't even listen to your question. So she says to me, why aren't you married? I'll say I'm homosexual. Or uh, <laughs> I'll say I'm very choosy. You know, my boyfriend would get lonely. Just, just ridiculous shit. You never, never say why you're really not married, right? Yeah, last, last. Right? So the worst thing, but this is what 90% of my... Uh, students that I listen to do she says you just want me for sex don't you she's really baiting him and he says no 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 I'm not that kind of guy I will treat you well I just want to hang out All right and then you're fucked you went straight <laughs> through that right that's like making an apology as a politician you make an apology as a politician next <coughs> day you're out right so you, your only strategy is to um, agree but agree, I call it in um, Street Hustle, I say play, the, play the, the role, play the caveman. So I say, listen, I'm a very simple guy, right? You overestimate me, right? I am A, B, C. I've just, just got one brain, two brains, you know, big Tom, little Tom, or is it big Tom, little Tom? <laughs> yeah, I just like steak, I like sleeping, I like sex, you know? I've not been listening to anything you've been saying. I'm totally distracted. I'm an awful boyfriend, just like a rabbit. Yeah, if we weren't in this bar, I would just, but anyway. And she sits there, and two girls this year have gone, you cocky bastard. <laughs> yeah, because you've just taken a frame. And she loves it. She secretly loves it. She goes, oh, my God, he didn't collapse on the final frame, yeah? Okay, even more fun, because you probably know that frame stuff. I've gotten successful uh, in the last year with uh, really focusing on my shit testing of the girl. And it's a lot of fun, because when you realize, oh, I can do it too. Oh, this is cool. You're like this. Because it's like, ha, 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 I'm going to shit test you, love. And in game, that's called qualification. 
It only occurred to me last year that that's exactly the same thing. So when you go for an interview, let's imagine this was an interview and um, you're all trying for jobs and that's the panel. They are qualifying the shit out of you guys, right? And you are jumping through their hoop desperate, yeah? You'll do anything to get that job. So on The Apprentice, you see how desperate they are and Sugar's just leaning back. Come on, jump through the frame, come to daddy, yeah? And he embraces it. So on the street, you can start qualifying small. Yeah, and you can't go full on um, combat. And you can't, remember, you can't qualify her until she's hooked. You should know that rule. You can't just walk up to a girl and go, so tell me something interesting about yourself. <laughs> She'll be like, fuck you, who are you? <laughs> but as soon as she's hooked, as soon as I see that she likes me, I say, anyway, so why London? I don't get it. You could have gone somewhere sunny. Like, why London? I don't get it. See what I'm doing? She justifies herself. Now remember, with dog training and child rearing and teaching, what do you do when someone jumps through the hoop, when the dog jumps through the hoop? You reward. You, reward. you have to praise. The, the, the father knows, right? She has to feel like it was worth jumping through the hoop. So I say, so why do you move to London then? And she goes, oh, well, actually, you know, I just love the, the clubs and the bars and stuff. I go, oh, that's good. Yeah, I like that about you. You know what you want and you go for it. I like that. High five. Cheesy old high five, yeah? It's good, but it works. And she, she gets a little tingle. Remember, Any statement that you give where you say, I like this about girls, and she justifies herself, that's qualifying. So, but I usually use that, that one on the date. So on a date, I'll say, do you know what? I usually like uh, tall girls. I like girls with good hair. And obviously, she starts to justify. She says, oh, I'm 174 with heels. And, uh, oh, I used to have long hair. I say, yeah, I really like girls that um, are passionate about something. You know, they have this, like, they're not just cute. You know, that's from mystery, yeah? They're cute, but they've got something interesting about them. Have you got something interesting about you? Yeah, yeah, I have, I have, I have. I really like them. Um. You say, that is great. And you'll hear me do this on, uh, on all the dates I've been recording. I say, do you know what? When I saw you in the street, I, I obviously just thought you were hot, you know, because I'm a guy, one brain, two brain. But now, I'm impressed, you know? Don't get a big head, but I'm impressed. That's all from mystery, right? So I'm holding the frame. I might say to her, even on the street, you could say, sorry, how, how tall are you? Right, you don't need to answer. Uh, you are ready to jump through the frame. That's a great little test. You could say, um, I always go to them. So hang on, you're pretty, you're interesting. Why are you single? That's a great one for girls. Say to girls, why are you single? You must be one of these crazy cat girls, you. Hot, but crazy. Uh, no, 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 the reason I'm single is, and she jumps through your hoop, yeah? And you go, I like that about you. Two points, well done, two points, don't fuck it up. Two points, good, yeah? Qualify, reward, qualify, reward. So if you're pretty good at day game uh, and you've got good at shit tests, the last thing you need to perfect, this is what I've been working on myself, is qualifying. So eventually becoming Alan Sugar, eventually becoming Ramsey in his kitchen, eventually becoming Putin to his uh, cabinet meeting, yeah? He doesn't only pass tests, he gives tests. You have to really think about that one, yeah? And not many PUAs I see, not even good PUAs, are, are good at qualifying. And it really flips the frame. It really takes the frame off her to you. Because you're no longer the sheep in the pen. You're the, the, the farmer with the pen, or the sheepdog gathering the sheep into the pen. Give girls things to do. Does anybody use that technique? Bring me this on a date, or do this for me, or I want you to do this. Has anybody ever tried that with a girl? No, look, it's I'll buy the drinks, first round. Mission for you, All right? Off you go, find the two best seats. Make sure it has a candle and it's dark so I can try and kiss you. I mean, sorry, off you go. And one girl said to me, that was the best bit of the date time. She said, I loved it when you gave me that little job, All right? I was a school teacher for many years and when you give kids a little job, like, right, who wants to sharpen pencils at a break? They love it. The favorite activity was cleaning the classroom, All right? You can experiment with when you give kids nothing to do, when you give them the frame, what you, you know, this, when you say to them, so what do you want to do? They're, they're lost. They don't know what to do. They love it when there's order. And girls love it when there's frame. But the problem is society's told us, all these voices have told us that it, it's, it, it's bad to uh, snatch the frame off her and make her work. But once you realise that she loves it, I often say, um, when she's coming to my house, maybe it's the second day, I'll say, oh, you're... Um, you're Russian, I want you to bring me a, a Russian dessert. 
I want you to make a Russian dessert, okay? I'll give you the wine, right? I'll do the wine, I'll do the pasta, but you need to make, and don't buy it, otherwise you're not allowed in my house, right? You gotta make it. Can you do that? Yeah, 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 I can do that. And she spends like four hours shopping, making, buying. She's so excited to come to my house. And she's like a beaming kid. I did it, I did it, I did it. And you reward. You say, that's fantastic. You know, when I met you, I just thought you were cute. But this is good. You're interesting, I like it, well done. She's like that, oh yes, I did something, yeah? So, so don't feel bad.